Today on Pro's Park Best, I'm gonna show you five things that you did not know about Disneyland. I mean, you, there's no way you know these five things. You just don't know them. Do you guys know why I like to make these videos? Because Disneyland brings me an immense amount of joy. Uh, for me, my wife, my son, we love it here. And I love sharing these little facts and details because I find it really interesting when I learn something about Disney. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'd like to share them with you guys. I hope you enjoy these little facts, these little, these little nuggets, if you will, about some Disney trivia. I hope it makes, uh, makes you smile, brightens your day a little bit. There is a word that is not supposed to be uttered in Disneyland. You're not supposed to say this because nobody knows what it is. And that word is employee. Disney cast members are not employees. You know what they are? They're cast members. And why do they call them cast members? Because they come what's called on stage. They're out here to perform. They are cast members. They are not employees. This is a very, this is a word that you don't ever see in Disneyland, the word employee. No, 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 it's verboten. It's not even there. We see the exits of a sign or whatever. It says cast member only, cast member here, cast member there. Never employee only, except in one spot in all of Disneyland. Right here. There's the great moments with Mr. Lincoln. And then you're over here, you're gonna see the Mad Hatter store. Right here, you're gonna walk right back here. There is a door and most people never even look at this door, but it's important. It's got a lot of history here. This door, it's on stage. Oh my gosh, Woo! <laughs> Yes! Doing what you do, you look so good, Pluto. Dun, 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 dun. Woo! Thank you so much. <laughs> There you go. Oh, a little soft too. Get out of here. <laughs> Rare form. All right, I got distracted. You don't get distracted. So let me show you back to what I was talking about. Right here, there is a door. Do you see this door? It says, what does it say? Employees only. This is the only place in all of Disneyland where you'll see the word employees. Yep, right there. And the reason it says that, this building used to be a giant mill, like a lumber mill. When Disneyland it was first built in 1954, there's a lumber mill, it's where they did all the cutting for the wood. Then they turned it into the opera house. Well, they had the lumber mill employees. This is a door that they would use. So in order to honor those employees who helped build Disneyland, they kept the word employee on this side door. That's awesome. Hey guys, why was Indiana Jones so sad? Well, his career was in the rocks. <laughs> Thank you, Bailey. You just run into and just told me that joke, so I want to share it. All right, so this next thing uh, you haven't seen, probably don't know about Disneyland, we have to go into the uh, Opera House. You know, where they have. Hey! All right, so this next thing is in the Opera House where they have the great moments of Mr. Lincoln. Let's go check it out. As you walk into the Opera House, one of the first things you're gonna see is, of course, everybody knows about this bench. Most people don't know about this bench. Well, maybe they do, I don't even know. I'll talk about it, but that's not one of the five things. This is the actual park bench that Walt sat on from Griffith Park, where he got the idea of Disneyland, which is really cool. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's just kind of a little freebie for you. What I'm talking about is right next to the bench is this fresh roasted peanut cart. This is what, this is an original cart. It was here on opening day for Disneyland. Now here's what happened though. They were selling peanuts and people were buying them and loving them, but then dun, 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 something happened. What happened with these sweet, sweet, fresh roasted peanut carts was this. Walt walked around and saw that all the people were eating them and then throwing these shells and they threw them all over and it caused a lot of garbage on the street. Walt did not like that. Well, I don't blame him. They were dirtying up the park. So he's like, get rid of them. And they got rid of the peanut cells. So they're, they're gone. But this is one of the cards that they had until they got rid of it. Right there, you guys. Let's just think of that for a second. If people would have thrown all their trash away, we probably would still be able to get fresh roasted peanuts like you get at the baseball game. But I gotta be honest with you. When I'm at a baseball game, I chuck them and leave them on the ground too. This next little thing that you probably don't know about Disneyland, it's still, we gotta be still here on Main Street USA. Main Street USA. Do, do you guys know what year Walt Disney was born in? He was born in 1901. It's true, it's very true, 1901. And there is an homage to Walt here for 1901, right here on Main Street. As you look down, you see the beautiful castle, but if you look to the left, you're gonna see the Penny Arcade. It's a beautiful Penny Arcade. Now, the reason it's called the Penny Arcade, this used to be an arcade. You go in there and the games would cost kind of like a penny and whatever, but they don't really have it anymore. Now it's just more of like a, a candy shop. But look up there at that penny. There you go, you can see. 
States is United States of America is a 1901 penny. Ah, love it. That's the year Walt was born. Something kind of fun though. This isn't this isn't one of the top five. It's just something kind of fun to know. When they do like Christmas things or they have like things that hang across, they take that penny off and they put they string like wires across. I'll show you where the holes go. They take the penny down and there's two holes right behind that penny. But if you go across the across the way from Main Street, right there, this building here, bam! That's where those cables go into, right there, that building. Right there to the other side. How cool is that? I love that. This also isn't something about the video that you don't know, but just kind of a little nugget of information. You know, they heard about Club 33. You guys know what Club 33 is, right? But in Disney California Adventure, they have Club 1901. It's kind of like Club 33 over there. And that is because 1901, year Walt Disney was born. For this next one you didn't know about Disneyland, it's located in New Orleans Square. And this is one that I did not know until cast members like, do you know about this one? And then once they told me, I was like, holy cow, loved it. All right, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. And when I, well, here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna ask you a question and you have three seconds to answer. You have to be honest with me and with yourself. When I ask this question, you got three seconds. Whatever you think, that is your answer, all right? You have three seconds to answer this. Put your answer down in the comments down below. All right, here we go. If you could only ride one of these rides for the rest of your life, you gotta choose one of these three rides, which one would you choose? Indiana Jones, Price Caribbean, or Haunted Mansion? Answers down below. I probably would choose Haunted Mansion, I think. I'm not sure if that's the correct answer, but that's probably what I would do. Oh, I don't know. Pirates is so good and Indy's so good. It's such a hard thing. That's what you had to do in three seconds. Whatever your gut check was. My gut check was Haunted Mansion. Speaking of Indiana Jones, what do you call Indiana Jones in a Norwegian river? Harrison Fjord. I personally feel that I think New Orleans Square is probably the greatest theme land in all of Disneyland. There's just so much to see. There's so much going on with it. I know some people might say it's actually Galaxy's Edge because the theming there is amazing. But New Orleans Square is just spectacular. And we are now going to enter into this particular store and I'll show you something you did not know about Disneyland. This is the Crystal of New Orleans. This store is just really eye candy. You come in here, it's usually very quiet, it's nice, it's awesome. Now let me tell you the history of the store, and then I'm going to show you something you didn't know about Disneyland. When Walt Disney was visiting the New York's World's Fair, he met the Arribas Brothers. They had like a little a stand there, they were doing their glass work. He was so intrigued by it that he asked them, he's like, hey, would you like to come and have a store at Disneyland? They said, sure. And they had two stores, the one here in New Orleans and then the one that was actually in the castle. The castle there. Eventually they moved the one from the castle and moved it over to the Penny Arcade. And from the Penny Arcade, they moved it across the street. So I still have the two stores here. But while they had that store in the Penny Arcade, they made this the most amazing plate. You can see all these cool things here, but if you look right up here, you're going to see this plate. This is an etched plate right here. It's got, and that's that's a little reflection on it. That is Walt Disney. This is a silver plate with gold etching and crystal. They etched it on this machine that's right behind me right here. I'll show you the machine. Okay, so this is like a, I don't know the name of it, it's like an etching device, but that's like a diamond wheel. It's spinning really fast. It's hard to tell probably on the camera. And a little bit of water dripping down, kind of keep it wet. They can go in there and they can actually engrave on crystal and do names. This is the actual machine, the very machine that they used to make this plate here for Walt. Now when they made this plate, they, they were gonna do it as a gift for him, but they ended up never really giving it to him. They just kept it there in the store. Then they ended up hanging it up in the store in the Disneyland castle, and he came in and he saw it and he liked it. What's also super interesting about the store is it is not owned by Disney. The Rebus Brothers, they are the longest contracted uh, company here in Disneyland. Since they moved in, they've been here, so they are actually not Disney employees. They are their own employees. They have a contract with Disney. Now, that plate they were talking about there, when they moved that from that the castle to the Penny Arcade, they took that plate from there and they brought it over here to the store and it's been here ever since. Come in and look at it. It's a thing of beauty. If you notice, when you look at the plate, you can see that Walt's a little bit older because he was older when we saw this. He saw the plate and then shortly after he saw the plate is when he passed away. So he did get to see it right before he passed away. That's why he looks a little bit older in the plate. Okay, so let's say you come in here, you really wanted to get something. Like you could get your name etched on a glass. You see that they got like John, like there's different names here. Now you see that they're done in like the block lettering, right? The block lettering. They can though, right here, if you look, you see right this? 
They can do cursive, but there's only one employee here that is trained to do the cursive, but it looks amazing. Ah! So if you want that, you have to place an order, and then when they can, she will come in and do the cursive. Be sure to visit the store in New Orleans. We come down here. There's a lot of history, a lot of cool things in this in this particular store. It's it's really cool. All right, so for this next thing, we've got to go into Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, uh, Batu, Star Wars Land. I have to tell you about a memory I have about Disneyland as we as we go over there. When I was in high school, I came to Disneyland with this, and I was with this girl, and I so liked her so much at the time. And I remember I was trying to be cool and everything. And we rode Haunted Mansion together, and you know, high school, uh, like everything's just so big in life in high school, right? And we were like, in, we're riding High man Mansion. I was like holding her hand, and I thought, this is it. This is the this is the moment. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna lean over, and I was gonna I was gonna like try to try to kiss her, like on the Haunted Mansion. So I, I don't know. I thought that was I don't even want to, I don't know. I'm telling you the story. Anyways, it was right as you're coming out of the attic, going around that corner there. I tried my I tried my move and I leaned over and the cart kind of turned like this and I went forward and we we bunked heads. <laughs> I was mortified. Just embarrassed to the highest degree. I was like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, at, at, at that age, you can, you just have to pretend like nothing happened. So I remember we just we went back to both just sitting there, just held the rest of the ride. I think we even stopped holding hands. What happened here, guys? Because look here, as you can see, somebody lost their shoe, right? That's nice, they put it there. Then you walk down here, and what is this? I mean, like, seriously, what kind of experience are these people having if they're losing their shoes? <laughs> Speaking of bad dates, Amanda just told our Patreon group the story. I'm not, I'm kidding you not. This guy made her go on a date, and he made her, when he picked her up, sign a contract saying that they would only hold hands. <laughs> That's a crazy story. It's on Patreon. So here we are, of course, we are in Batu. There it is. Oh, that's the hunk of junk of the galaxy. We go right over here. We are at docking bay number seven. We're gonna go in here and we'll show you something you probably didn't know. Inside the restaurant, you look right up here, you can see a carbonite freezer. Check it out. And you hear the sounds, they're freezing things. There it is. That's what they, that's like what they froze Han Solo in in Empire Strikes Back. And if you look up the side, you can see some things that have been frozen right there. Do you know who told me about that? Peter from Ordinary Adventures told me about this. You guys, if you haven't, follow their channel. It's the best Disneyland channel of all of them. Ordinary Adventures, I'll put a link down below. Make sure you're following them. They know everything there is to know about Batu and Galaxy's Edge. And Kitra, you are amazing. Okay, so on Docky Bay 7, we exit out. This is called the Spice Room. And the reason they call that is all the spices along the top here. But you'll notice one of them is written in red lettering. This is called Arabesh, this is the Star Wars thing, but it translates one to one to English. That says, Crate Salt. It's upside down, Crate Salt. Crate is a planet where they have all those, you know, those salt crystals, and they're like uh, going along, I think it's in episode eight, they have all those salt. That is Crate Salt right there. I love the cast members. So the cast member came up, he saw me film the thing about the, uh, the carbonite freezing chamber, and he's like, that's not the good one, Chris. Come over here to the spice room. That's where he showed me the crate salt. And I was like, what? So cast members, Gerald, all of you, every one of them, you're the best, thank you. This is a simple little video, but I think it's a really fun video. If you want more videos like this, I need to know that. So here's what you need to do. If you like this video or did something, if you learned some detail about Disney you did not know, put a little like, hit that little like button. Ding, 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 ding. And then let's put it in a comment. Since we just found out about the salt, put in salt down as a comment down below. If I get 57 more comments as a salt, I'll even do more deeper dives about things you didn't know. But I hope you guys have a fantastic night and have a great week. You are amazing and I hope you guys know that. The reason the world is good is because of you and I'm talking to you. Oh, and even you.